Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video with me. My name is Cotton Candy Doll. If you're new here, welcome. Welcome all. Sorry. This is a shifting video. You guys know about what happened last time. Uh, so basically, uh, Hawks ended up being, you know, in me and he gave me 10 or 11 orgasms. I can't even, I can't even really keep count. It may have been more, uh, but this guy basically like, so I haven't been able to get Hawks off my mind. He's on my mind now, thanks to what happened. And in a way, I kind of feel like it was part of their plan from the beginning. Like maybe they planned that to get him like in my head since I was already kind of rejecting him. <laughs> anyway, cause I had no intentions of getting close to Hawks whatsoever. You know, and the thing is, like, this guy fucked me to oblivion, okay? I was literally, like, screaming, like, <laughs> you guys know what it's like when you have sex, okay? You know what it's like, women. You can't really be quiet. I mean, it's impossible with what he was doing. You know, him just constantly just, <laughs> and me like, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Um... That's a little bit TMI, but now he knows how I sound in bed. And um, I don't know if it's going to be the same anymore for me until she knows how to do it because um, I don't know what my body will be expecting. Like, but Toshinori is my man. I really can't ignore him. I really can't, like, um, I can't make him. I don't know. I don't really know what to do about it. Anyway, Toshinori is my man, and I really just want, like, to make love to him again. And I'll do it by any means necessary, even if I have to take it from him. Because you know what? You don't ignore your girl like this. And you don't give her away to another person. Like, I don't care. So, I came up with this plan. My plan involved Viagra and laxatives. Because I had to get back at them for what they did. Also, my plan was really just to go there and see Frodo. But I can't see Frodo without running into Hawks and possibly Toshinori because I need his limo to get... I don't know how to get to you in Hawks' house. If I knew how to get there, I would try to fly there. But I don't know. And that's the, you know, that's the reality of it. That's the fact of it. And the thing is, like, Hawks did fuck me. And it was so good, guys. Like, it was so good. But... He's not my man. It's like, Toshinori, what are you doing? So, I don't really know what this is. I don't know what this is between us. But I'm going to try to cut it off. Like here. I might not be able to completely cut it off the way that I want. But I want to at least try. I have to try. Because I'm not choosing between... I'm not going to choose between them. I, I'm not choosing between Hawks and Toshinori. That's ridiculous. Hawks is the father of my child. And Toshinori is the guy that I'm in love with. So, you know, people have flings all the time with people. So I'm just going to look at it as a fling. You know, I'm going to treat Hawks like a little boy. Like he's a boy with a crush. And, you know, and in order for this plan to work, like I have to pretend that I'm okay with everything. So I'm going to go there with a smile on my face. I'm going to pretend that we're all one big happy family. <laughs> like I'm going to pretend like that. But really in the inside, I'm like, I am getting them back with the dick because you don't fuck with me this way, okay? You mess with the wrong man. This man doesn't like it. This man is going to do something about it. The man part of me. Because one man, think about it. One man, okay? So if you're one man, you're part man. Just so you know. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm going to tell you what happened. I shifted to Toshinori's house. When I got there, the limo was already waiting. I had the great idea to go and see Hawks first. And I'm really surprised that the limo's there. Toshinori hasn't seen me yet. He hasn't come out of his house, but I'm guessing he's going to come out soon. And if the limo's waiting for him, it means he must be pre preparing to go to Hawks' house. So this is even better. This is grand. So I go and I get in the limo and I tell him, you know, Toshinori sent me today. He's like, I'm not going to fall through that again. He told me that last time. And 
um, there was a big there was a big problem. Frodo couldn't get his shots, but I mean he got them later. But still, and I'm like, and I tell the driver, I'm like, I, I'm supposed to go get Hawks first, and then we're supposed to come back to Toshinari. We're gonna come back after, and he's giving me this suspicious look. He's like. Does that make any sense? Go all the way there. I said, Hawks needs help with the baby, like now. Can you please drive me over there? I said, I swear. I said, I said, I swear. Like, I promise. I'm not playing games with you this time. I'm being 100% genuine. This is serious about my son. He goes, okay, I'm going to take your word for it. And I go, yeah. So the little driver drives off. And I'm looking out through the back window and I see Toshinori come outside. He walks up, he looks at it. And the, the driver doesn't notice he's driving away. I mean, the driver doesn't notice that uh, Toshinori is watching him drive away. So like, Toshin I see Toshinori do this with his hands, like, like okay. And I'm just like, ah, fuck you, you know what? Fuck you, Toshinori. So we get to Hawk's house and Hawks opens the door and he goes, I'm kidding, dog, what a surprise. He goes, is Toshinori coming out to you? I said, Toshinori will be here soon. He goes, where's Toshinori? I said, Toshinori will be catching up to us. Don't worry. You know, and I walk over to Hawks and I hug him. I gave him like a hug, but the whole time I'm like cringing on the inside. Just, Ugh. And he's like, okay. He like sighs a sigh of relief. Like he felt like, I felt like he was like tense. But after I told him that and I reassured him with a hug, he's like, fine. So then I go, you know, can you make me some coffee? I'm going to go check on Frodo. And he goes, sure, I'll make you coffee. So he goes in there. I hear him in the kitchen making the coffee and stuff. I'm upstairs. And Frodo is asleep. Frodo is asleep. And as soon as I walk in, he starts crying. And guys, his cry is... Okay, imagine the worst cry in the world. Like a screaming child. But it's echoing too. So I pick him up. I'm like, mommy's here and I'm holding him and stuff. And I think once he realizes it's me, he stops crying. And but I can tell he's like, he's like, whatever it is, he's hungry or something. So like I go downstairs and I'm holding Frodo. And Hawks goes, You really done it, didn't you? I'm like, what? He goes, You woke him up. I'm like, yeah, and I wanted to say hi. He's like, you woke up the baby to say hi. You realize he hasn't gotten any sleep in like a couple of hours. I'm like, he can see his mommy for a second, you know. Can't you, baby? And I lift him up and I'm looking at him and stuff and trying to like hug him. I try to like kiss on him and stuff. And he's like crying. I'm like, damn it. He's crying. I'm holding him and he's like, oh my God. Like Hawks is like, oh my God. It's just freaking a nightmare right now. Do I really need to prepare breakfast this way with him crying? I said, that's the price you pay when you have a child. I know, I love his cry. And then I go, you know, his cry kind of reminds me of me when you made me cry. And Hawks gets like a little smirk on his face. He goes, and I'm like, he's just, he comes behind me while I'm holding the baby. And he like flicks my hair and he goes, I want to hear you say it next time. And I was like, say what? He goes, hmm. And he walks away. So I take Frodo. I sit down with him. I'm holding him and rocking him. He's still crying. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, Hawks, can you do something, please? Like, and then Hawks is like, I'll get his food ready in a second. And his eyes are starting to turn red. Um, Frodo's eyes are starting to turn red. And that means he's hungry. And that means he's going to start gnawing at his... Uh, his uh, blanket or whatever, you know, his teeth and stuff, they make like this little, his teeth make like this, like they make this sound. I love the way they sound. It's like an ASMR. It's so relaxing. And so like he brings over the bottle finally and I'm feeding the baby and the baby has a smile on his face and I'm like, yeah, it's mommy. And uh, Hawks is like making us breakfast and he's like, oh, I'll be right back. He runs upstairs. So I reach in my pocket, I take out the laxatives and the Viagra, and I pop two in his drink. So then 
before I'm done finish, finish feeding Frodo, Hawks runs back downstairs and he goes, Cat and Candy Doll, um, so I'm going to go to the school today. Do you want to stay with Frodo? And I'm like, um, that wasn't really a part of my plan. Like, I didn't actually come there. I'm talking to you guys. I didn't come there to be with, to, yes, I came to see Frodo, but I have to get back to what they did. If I stay with Frodo, how am I going to make sure my plan goes through? I still have to get Toshinori too. And Toshinori hasn't had his breakfast yet. So I wanted to make sure I at least got him too. I said, you know what? Let me just take, I was like, will you take Frodo with us to the school? I need to go anyway. And he goes, that's a good idea. And then he's like, so then he goes upstairs, he's packing, and Frodo stings, he brings him back downstairs. And I go, are we gonna like clean the baby? Are we gonna wash him and everything? And then Hawks goes, he's a baby. He doesn't need that anyway. And I'm like, okay. So I've just finished feeding him. We put him inside of the uh, the car seat and everything. And he goes, we are like, we are already like a family, like husband and wife. And he reaches over, you know, he tries to like touch my face and I kind of like, I pull one of these and he goes, what's wrong? I'm like, nothing. He's like, I can't touch your face. I'm like, I go, yeah, I'm just, I go, you know what? I'm the same way with Toshinori. I'm just not used to like affection like that. And he goes, I'll get you used to it. And I like kind of, I look at him, but then I ignore him. I just buckle with the baby and everything. Um, so we get into the limo and I'm like, um, why don't you guys go to the school? I'm going to go on to, I was like, why don't you guys go on to the school? And then he's like, why don't you want to go to Toshinori's house? And I'm like, because I don't want to go right now. So Hawks is like, okay, well, there you guys get stuck in my eye. So then Hawks is like, well, you know, I can just drive you to the school if you want, and then we'll meet you there later. We'll bring Frodo by. Besides, everyone's waiting to see him because none of the students have seen Frodo yet. But they also don't know that it's my child. They don't know that it's Hawks. I feel like it'd be too hard to explain to some kids how it happened. I mean, they're old enough to understand how intercourse works, the reproductive system. I'm sure they all learned about it in like seventh grade. And these kids are probably, what, 16, 17, going on 18. I don't know exactly how old Ida is. I think he's an older kid too. Anyway, um, so if anything, he would probably be the most popular one to explain it. Like I would want him to explain that to me if I was a kid that age because he would do it in a, such a professional way that's not like that doesn't make you feel uncomfortable I don't think anyway um they get so we get to Toshinori's house and I run off guys so that way Toshinori doesn't see me I don't want him to, to like be I don't want to be confronted right now by him okay I'm still pissed off I'm still mad and I'm not ready to see him yet and I'm still pissed off at Hawks too but you know I have to hide that if I want to get them I have to pretend everything's fine so I run off to the school because it's only down the street from Toshinori's house. When I get there, I get I see Principal Nezu. I go in. Um, I tell him, you know, Principal Nezu, I know it's been a long time since I've been here, but I'm ready to come back and start. And then Principal Nezu goes, I'm glad to hear it. Um, and I'm so glad that you came here yourself and that you, like, expressed wanting to come back. I'm really glad to have you a part of the team. Welcome back, Kai and Yenba. And I said, thank you. And he goes, I've got a bunch of paperwork for you. I'm like, you do? He goes, yes. So Principal Nezu pulls out a stack of files and just drops them in front of me. He goes, those are yours. Take them to your class, look them over, and um, be ready tomorrow. And I go, thank you. And I take the papers. And I'm walking back, and I'm like, damn it, tomorrow? I mean, if my plan works the way that I want it to, I'm still going to get it tomorrow. Like, I'm going to be in huge trouble, but. I'm not about to sit here and just let them get away with that shit. Because I'm just done, like, letting people do whatever they want to me. I guess I'm over it. I'm so over it. So anyway, I go to my class, and I go into Principal Nezu's office. And Principal Nezu's like, there's a meeting about to happen, and um, we're going to be doing a luncheon type thing. And I'm like, so it's basically like for breakfast. He goes, it's like a brunch. Because it's not really that early. Yeah, Toshinori was supposed to be at the school earlier, I guess, but they're coming in later 
for this meeting. And also, I kind of forgot about the Viagra and laxatives when I had <laughs> Frodo in my hand. I still had them in my pocket and I didn't get a chance to use them. I did slip some into Hawks' food, but I don't think Hawks ate any of it. I think he threw it all out so we can come together to the school. So I go, okay, well, we're going to come in for the luncheon or whatever. So I go in there and Principal Neza goes, can you make the coffee? Can you get everything? You know, I don't know why people always want coffee. Even late at night, if they go to like a charity event, something like that, they'll ask if you have coffee and it's 11 o'clock at night. Like, what do you need coffee for? So I decided, you know, I'm going to put it in the, I'm going to put the laxatives and the, um, the Viagra and the coffee. So I put the laxatives and the Viagra and the coffee and uh, Principal Nezu get, has these sandwiches. The sandwiches are all wrapped up and he basically puts them on like this silver, um, it's like a flat plate. It's really plain. It's really light. I don't know what it's made out of. It kind of reminds me of those tins you use that you buy for like um, Thanksgiving, but it was much thinner than that and much flatter. So he had sandwiches on top of those. On another one, he had like different types of muffins. He had like chocolate chip muffins, but everything is prepackaged already. And then there's like paper plates. There's like spoons and forks. And so it says on the, so like on the board, it says like, how to be a better teacher or something. Um, I don't know what it was for. I think it's self-motivational thing. And it, I didn't know about these meetings, but I guess they do it like every month. So they come in and everyone starts pouring, you know, coffee for themselves. And I haven't seen anyone drink it yet. They all just kind of sit it down. It's Endeavor. I see um, Fox comes in, Toshinori comes in. Um, they don't bring the baby. And then uh, Midnight is also there, Mr. Aizawa, and me. So all of us are sitting there. Oh, and Principal Nezu. So all of us are sitting there, and Principal Nezu was just really just talking about how to put yourself out there. Um, we talked about what makes us tick as teachers, like what makes us angry, things that annoy or upset us, like our biggest pet peeves, that kind, that kind of thing. And um, so no one's really drinking out of the coffee, and then, you know, so then I, I make mine and I take a sip out of it. And mine does, of course, mine doesn't have anything in it. So Principal Nezu is talking to them and he just stops for a minute. And he's like, so then he continues. He's like, so one of the things as I wanted to really express to you guys is um, talking about integrity. People will make, you know, assumptions about what they think a teacher should be. And, and he pauses again and he's like, and uh, and he goes, I'll be right back. So he leaves the room. And I look over at his, uh, I look over where he was eating. His coffee was gone. I'm like, oh God. So Principal Nezu, strike one, got him. I probably should have thought about who I'm putting it into crossfire fire or whatever. Um, but Midnight drank all hers. Endeavor drank all his. Mr. Aizawa drank his. Fox and Toshinari, all of them drank their coffee. It's all gone. And I'm the only one with the full cup. So like I ate one of, I opened a sandwich. Guys, the sandwich was freaking delicious. Okay. I don't know what they did to the sandwich, but it was so good. And like, so I finished off my sandwich. I'm eating it. And everyone's kind of looking, has this look, weird look on their face. And I'm like, what's wrong with everyone? And you know, I need them to know that I got them back. So I really didn't care like that. Endeavor got dragged into it. I didn't care that Midnight was dragged into it. And I definitely didn't care that Mr. Aizawa was dragged into it. Because you know what? You shouldn't have chased me that time. Like, you need to get your... You know what? You'll get yours, too. You can get it, too. Like, you know what? Fuck all of you. You know what? Fuck you, um, Endeavor, for not ever being... For being, you know, fake and not being yourself. For letting somebody impersonate you. Like, how do you let a villain get a hold of your blood? Come on. You're pathetic. Mr. Aizawa, come on. If it's summertime, you should not be wearing a scarf. What are you doing, man? Fuck you too. Midnight, you shouldn't be dressing like a slut in the school. The kids are too young to be seeing a slutty teacher like you walking around. Principal Nezu, you think you're all that. You think you're so smart. Well, guess what? I'm going to pull you down from your high horse. Fox, you're not allowed to do that to me ever again. Don't you ever do that shit. I'm saying all this, and they're just looking at me. They're like, what the heck? 
And like Toshinori, this is especially for you. This is for you and Hawks. I hope you have a great day. And I get up and I leave out. And I hear them in there and they're like, everyone's getting up and they're trying to like get out. Get out of the office. So I put something in front of the door so they can't get out. So everyone's like banging on the door. And I hear, oh God, what's happening? And like, <laughs> um, yeah, so I basically told everybody off. And so like, I'm running down the hallway and Principal Nelson comes out of the bathroom and his face is like red. And he gets, he has this look I've never seen before. He doesn't look, it's not an angry look. It's like a really sad, like the pitiful look on his face. And he like grabs my wrist as I'm running. He goes, kind of can't that wait. I have a feeling that, you know, he goes, this isn't right, whatever it, whatever is happening here. Something isn't right. I don't feel right. And I go, that's because of something I did. And I like snatched my, I snatched my <laughs> wrist away from him and I ran. So I'm running down the hallway and these, these guys are yelling and I hear Principal Nezu like, oh no. He's like trying to like open the door. Because next to the door, there were like these lockers. Um, so the lockers were not flat. They're not, they weren't ingrained against the wall. They were the kind you can push. It took me a while to push it in front of the door. I had to use my quirk, but it was pretty heavy. And I don't know why Toshinori and Endeavor and all of them didn't try to just bust out. I would think they would try and bust out the door, but I'm guessing it's because Frodo was somewhere nearby. Maybe he was sleeping. Maybe that he's with another teacher and they don't want to wake him up. So they have to be quiet, <laughs> which is like perfect for me. So yeah. So then I end up shifting out of there and um, I wanted to do more, but I feel like I got everybody like, you know, um, when I go back, I'm dead. Like they're all there. I am so dead. Like, I don't know who's going to try and kill me or what, but like, maybe they'll just brush it off. Like it's no big deal. Like, I mean, I just, I didn't get to see them do anything. Like I didn't get to see them like mess themselves. I didn't get to see them have a massive a massive boner and just like spill out everywhere at the same time so like um me pretending like everything was okay i felt like that was the right way to go because they definitely deserved it right that's what they get for like messing with me like don't fuck with me you fucked with the wrong man okay and i have to do something okay i'm not gonna sit here and just let people run all over me you know and i and i felt like i needed to tell the others off too you know and I was kind of innocent in the whole thing, but I mean, how's she going to take off her leather suit in time before she messes herself? She's probably not. So I wonder if they all messed themselves there and, <laughs> and like spilled out with juice with their own. I wonder if they like came all over themselves. <laughs> and I designed the, med the medicine. Okay, so the medicine I, I gave them was designed to make you go over and over again. Because it's basically like a cleaner. It's cleaning out your entire system. So in a way, I did them a favor, like I cleaned out their guts, right? They should be happy for that. When I go back there tomorrow, because I was told to come back by Principal Nancy, I'm going to listen to him, I'm going to come back. I might go back and just go straight to the school. I mean, there's no point in me stopping at Toshinori's house. There's no point in me stopping at Hawks' house so they can try and punish me. I'm going to go to the school, you know. Endeavor ended up being in a, in a crossfire too, but that's what you get. <laughs> Like, I'm just blaming everyone for what happened. Like, honestly, he should not have made it. Like, Hawk should not have made me like that. Like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this relationship is going to be like from now on. And I, I can't have things jeopardizing my relationship with Toshinori. And like I said, I'm not going to choose. So, <laughs> did you think, do you think what I did was right? I think I, what I did was right. Like, sorry. So, when I go back there, I'm definitely going to be on, on my guard. Uh, I don't know what to do when I get back there, but I mean, I'm going to the school, that's for sure. Because I don't think anybody can really touch me there. Like, Christian Nori might try to get me. The Hawks might be after me now, too. I'll figure it out. I'll come up with something. Anyway, um, I hope you guys like this video. <laughs> I'm happy that my plan worked. I'm so happy. My guy doesn't agree with it, but I was just like, you know what? 
I have to do stuff sometimes that people don't agree with. I can't listen to everybody all the time. So <laughs> if you like my video, please give me a thumbs up. Um, don't forget to hit the notification bell. That way you're notified when my other video becomes available and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.